Hello, I'm Amy Hodler with Neo4j, and we're here today with Dr. Alessandro Negro, the Chief Scientist of GraphAware. Um, we're very delighted to have Dr. Negro. He's been a longtime uh, member of the Graph community. Uh, he's also uh, was the main author of the very first recommendation engines based on Neo4j. Uh, and at GraphAware, he specializes in natural language processing, recommendation engines, and graph-aided search. So thank you for joining us, Alessandro, and agreeing to talk to us uh, very quickly here about some of the insights from your book, Graph-Powered Machine Learning. Hi, Hemi, and thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Wonderful. So um, first question, why did you write the book? What motivated you to get started on it? Good question, actually. Um, I wrote this book, uh, first of all, for uh, myself. I needed a, a mechanism for reorganizing my, uh, my ideas, my thoughts, and my experience uh, um, in this uh, amazing uh, area that is uh, the conjunction between uh, uh, graphs and uh, machine learning. And uh, uh, specifically inside uh, uh, GraphAware, we wanted a mechanism also to help uh, uh, newcomers to learn uh, quickly uh, how to deal with the complex uh, uh, tasks related to graphs and uh, uh, machine learning. And uh, on the other side, uh, I needed also a mechanism for uh, proving my uh, ideas. Uh, and uh, uh, the book uh, provided me the, you know, the motivation uh, for uh, putting back on white uh, and testing uh, a few ideas that, uh, that I had or that I experienced uh, in some of the customers that we served over these, uh, uh, these years, actually. Great. So graphs and machine learning, big concepts. How do you see the role of graphs in the machine learning space? Let me say that uh, the role of graphs changed uh, quickly uh, in the last uh, years, and uh, um, I think that uh, it will uh, change quickly even in the uh, in the future. Uh, so many years ago, when uh, I started working with uh, uh, with the graphs and uh, Neo4j, um, actually, uh, you know, there were um, a lot of people that were just curious about uh, a new mechanism for getting rid of uh, the classical uh, relational databases and use something uh, different. So at the beginning, uh, uh, these were the scenarios uh, possible. So people just wanted to, to test uh, this approach. But uh, over the years, uh, these, uh, mm -hmm. uh, these changed uh, uh, a lot. Now the world is uh, totally different. Uh, people are expert of graphs. They would like to uh, use graphs for more uh, advanced uh, uh, services or more advanced uh, uh, tasks. And specifically in this sense, uh, machine learning is uh, one of the most uh, relevant because uh, they needed a mechanism for uh, uh, accessing uh, data, for analyzing data uh, that was different than before. And uh, in that sense, uh, uh, graphs are playing uh, uh, a key role because uh, graphs can help to organize your data and uh, even your predictive models. Uh, um, and uh, also you can uh, leverage some specific uh, algorithms that are graph specific. Uh, and um, this definitely is opening uh, to uh, new opportunities, uh, is bringing uh, new ideas. So I'm uh, expecting that uh, if now we have uh, such a, a number of people using graphs for solving their machine learning problem, in the future, it will be even more uh, constant as a, uh, you know, as approach for solving uh, even maybe more complex problems. So your book uh, is available through an early access program now from, uh, from Manning, the publisher, uh, but also an excerpt from Neo4j. So we know people are uh, downloading it and are, are seeing it. What kind of early feedback are you, uh, are you getting on it? Oh, People are appreciating uh, the topic, uh, first of all, uh, mm -hmm. because um, more uh, than one feedback uh, was about the fact that uh, this was uh, a sort of a, a missing book, uh, a, mm -hmm. a conjunction ring uh, between uh, two words that clearly uh, work uh, very well together, can work together. And there was uh, uh, a lot of literature on this topic, but uh, uh, none of these was structured in a way in which people can uh, not only read about an idea, but they can also practice about uh, uh, this idea. So this is uh, definitely one of the most interesting uh, feedback that I'm constantly receiving by people contacting me on LinkedIn or uh, on the other channels, actually. Wonderful. So uh, is there anything else that you want to share with, uh, with the audience that uh, we haven't discussed yet? Well, uh, I really hope uh, that uh, 
people will not read my book cover to cover, but uh, they will uh, actually use the, mm -hmm. the book. Um, you can definitely uh, take uh, what you need uh, and use it in the way in which mm -hmm. uh, you prefer, because all the topics are not only theoretical uh, topics, uh, uh, they are concrete use cases. Uh, there are also um, concrete data sets that you can uh, use as an example for uh, you know, practicing the, the ideas inside and maybe applying them to your uh, concrete problem. So um, they can uh, read the, the book uh, and get answer to the greatest, uh, uh, let's say, uh, problem that they could find uh, because I found them actually and, um, and find answers that is the most important part. So please use it and not just uh, read uh, and uh, pause on your desk. Awesome. Well, um, you guys heard it here. A book that is meant to be used, a graph-powered machine learning by Dr. Alessandro Negro. Um, you can, uh, thank you for joining us today and you can get your free excerpt uh, on the Neo4j website underneath our events and resources area. Uh, you'll find a books area that you can, uh, you can attain that book. So thank you again, Alessandro. Really appreciate it. Thank you for writing the book. Thank you, Emmy. Thank you, Neil4j.